Well, we had a regular episode of Elden Lore prepared for this week, but with the first trailer for Shadow of the Earth Tree dropping, we thought it would be best to talk about our theories and observations, from the glimpse we were given into this exciting new foray into the realm of Shadow. With the release date finally revealed to be June 21st of this year, we still have plenty of time before any of our questions are truly answered. But in the meantime, let's all speculate together as a community about Mesmer the Impaler, a snake-clad, blood-flame-wielding possible demigod, the old man ready to tear off his own head to do battle, and the possibly omen-shadow hybrid that wields both death, blight, and lightning. There's plenty to discuss given what we were shown in the trailer, so let's begin this look into the DLC, see what we've learned, and what questions yet linger beneath the shadow of the Ur tree. Thank you for joining us for a slightly different episode of our ongoing Elden Lore series. While we typically discuss the lore of the people, places, and monsters of the lands between, today we'll be diving into DLC theorizing. If this is your first time joining us, welcome! We're excited to have you along for our wild speculations. If regular lore content is more your thing, we have over 100 episodes in this series, so subscribe to the channel and stay in the loop every week as we release more content. We also have a Discord where we discuss our favorite FromSoft lore and theories, and as you can imagine, it's particularly active right now. Whether you sub or not, thank you for joining us for this breakdown, and with that said, let's get back to the topic at hand. While there are so many things to talk about regarding this trailer, we want to focus on four major areas for the sake of this video. First, the old man and the woman in the portrait. Second, the gold-haired beast with omen horns. Third, Mesmer the Impaler. And lastly, how we access the DLC and its location, the Land of Shadow. During the trailer, we're shown what looks like a home, dilapidated and surrounded by swampland, which then cuts to a portrait of an old man with a younger woman standing beside him, one hand on his shoulder and the other on her pregnant belly. Our original thought during our community livestream was that this man could be Marika's father, and the woman beside him, a young Marika. However, upon closer inspection, I don't believe this to be the case. The woman standing by his side has dark hair, and while the color has all but drained from this portrait, the curly hair running down from her veil is definitely not bright gold. Her veil is also interesting as it covers her eyes, almost as if to hide their hue from us. This old man can actually be seen later in the trailer as well, now in a significantly more undead looking form, as we catch a momentary glimpse of him attempting to pull a sword out of his own head. If we follow the line of the sword, it also seems like this is the only thing holding him together, and his neck elongates as he pulls, which to me means this man will be tearing off his own head to do battle with us. My guess is that this is a phase 2 battle animation that will take place after facing him normally, but who knows. We can tell this is the same man due to the clasp holding his robe together. It matches that of the clasp in the portrait, and while at first I thought it resembled a crucible knot, I now believe it's depicting eyes. A longtime member of the channel and moderator of our Discord, Wolfie Muse, pointed out that this ornamentation closely resembles that of St. Trina's torch, so perhaps the old man and this woman are followers of Trina. No matter the answer, I'm looking forward to how gruesome this battle will be. Next, I want to discuss the gold-haired beast that bore a fleeting resemblance to Sarosh. At first, this creature looks like a mishmash of other enemies. Its face is almost human, and it has two rows of teeth, one human and one beast. It's almost as if the form of a beast has wrapped itself around the form of a man. Omen horns protrude from his head and body, and he's able to spit what looks like it could be a deathblight smoke at our tarnished. This is followed up by footage of this enemy summoning lightning down and throwing it toward us. The first place my mind went upon taking in this information was Godwin the Golden. We know that Mikola wanted to grant his brother a true death and that this process may have involved the Eclipse, so perhaps this is the result of Mikola's efforts. A twisted, deformed version of Godwin that's reminiscent of the Royal Revenants. However, a comment by one of our subscribers, SawStop16, called out that this enemy could be two omens standing on top of each other, 
much like you'd see during a Chinese dragon parade. And upon closer inspection, this does seem to be the case. When slowing down the scene where this boss is breathing death blight, we can see that there is no body within the shroud, simply legs and feet that seem to be standing atop another layer of shroud. To take this a step further, it seems like there could be another layer on top of this form, the one that's actually holding the mouth together. Whether or not these are omen, we can't say for sure, but it leads us to believe that this creature is less likely to be a form of Godwin himself, and more like an effigy of the Golden Sun. Still, its ability to wield his magics are interesting, and I look forward to learning more about it. Now we come to the poster boy of this DLC, Mesmer the Impaler. The truth behind his origins is likely to be FromSoft's best kept secret until Shadow of the Erdtree drops this June, but there are multiple possibilities I want to address. First, Mesmer's armor is adorned with serpents, and he even has two snakes that wrap themselves around his body while he fights. He also has the slitted eyes of a serpent, and while you could mistake them for those of someone who partakes in Dragon Communion, in my mind this snake imagery rules out that option, even though there are small bits of dragon imagery on this character as well. There's only one other demigod in the game that has this deep association with serpents, as well as Radagon's red hair, and that would be Praetor Rikard. This is an easy connection to make, but it's also worth noting that Mesmer seems to wield blood flame along with his lance, and this would tie him to Moog. I believe there's a way to reconcile these two connections if we look at how elongated Mesmer's limbs seem to be. In fact, we've seen elongated limbs like this in the past, hanging from the cocoon Moog fed with a steady stream of blood. We've always assumed that this arm and hand were what was left of Mikola inside the cocoon. With his plan to age himself cut short, it was believed that his long limbs were the result of his being removed from the Halic Tree. However, this arm and hand closely resemble that of Mesmer, and thanks to the dialogue at the end of the trailer, we know that by touching the withered arm, we'll be able to travel to the Realm of Shadow, where Shadow of the Earth Tree takes place. This was also confirmed in an interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki, which we will be mentioning shortly. What if it was never Mikola inside the cocoon, but instead it was Mesmer, stolen away by Moog due to a misunderstanding, and fed the blood of his chambers, slowly feeding him the power of the blood flame? This would make it possible for Mesmer to have ties to both Reichard and Moog, but there's some dialogue in the trailer that may even contradict these assertions. When Mesmer is introduced, we hear the line, Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction in one so bereft of light? It's possible this line is spoken by Mesmer before facing him, and if that's the case, who then would be his mother? It comes across as if he's speaking with Marika, as she would be the only person we know who has the authority to sanction lordship. So if Marika is his mother, perhaps his serpents have nothing to do with Reichard at all. Perhaps Mesmer simply gained power in whatever way he could, and his place in the timeline of Elden Ring predates that of the idea of blasphemy. It's incredibly difficult to say one way or the other what is going on with this character, and we can't wait to see what unfolds. An additional note on Mesmer that came from the aforementioned interview with Miyazaki is that his key art features him sitting in a chair, much like that of the demigods in Lanedale, before our battle with Morgoth. According to the man himself, this is meant to portray that he stands on equal footing with the other demigods and children of Marika, in terms of strength, and possibly even status. Lastly, I wanted to share some thoughts on the Realm of Shadow. This place seems to exist beyond the physical realm of the Lands Between. An argument could be made that it's actually the dreamscape that cut content tells us Mikola had associations with, but there's not enough in this trailer to say that definitively. The description of this DLC on Bandai Namco's site reads as follows. The Land of Shadow, a place obscured by the Ur Tree, where the goddess Marika first set foot. A land purged in an unsung battle, set ablaze by Mesmer's flame. It was to this land that Mikola departed, divesting himself of his flesh, his strength, his lineage, of all things golden. And now, Mikola awaits the return of his promised lord. 
So the Land of Shadow was once visited by Marika and purged by Mesmer, likely acting under her orders. This could mean that this place was removed from what is now the Lands Between somehow. It also says the Land of Shadow is obscured by the Earth Tree. Another of our commenters, Bruxis, put forward the idea that the Land of Shadow could be the literal flip side of the Lands Between. And the tree we see there is not a tree at all, but roots. This would make sense alongside the description of the land being obscured. It is literally being hidden below the shadow of the Earth Tree. Also, this description seems to imply that this is where the goddess Marika first set foot. And thanks to conversations within our Discord, I believe this could mean that this is the land where Marika was chosen to be an Empyrean. I also want to address the idea of Empyreans having their own shadows, such as Malaketh and Blythe. To me, it stands to reason that these shadows come from the Land of Shadows. So perhaps this is where the two fingers would pluck their Empyrean shadows from. Just a thought, but worth putting out there. Lastly, we learn that Mikola departed for this land, divesting himself of all things golden. To me, this bolsters the idea that Mikola was never in the cocoon to begin with. It was merely a rumor that Moog believed. I believe we enter this land through the hand of Mesmer, hanging from the cocoon. So perhaps, he was placed there long ago in order for Mikola to do the same. This would explain why Melania never made an attempt to retrieve Mikola from Moog. There was never any need. Shadow of the Earth Tree is set to bring us many more questions than answers once it finally releases on June 21st, and I can't wait to dive back into Elden Ring with new content. I am incredibly excited to read the descriptions of every new weapon and piece of armor, so I can bring you the lore on every new character and enemy we'll be encountering. I'm also deeply excited by the size and scope of this new land that we're going to be exploring, as Miyazaki has stated that it is at least the size of Limgrave, and possibly even larger. After watching the trailer, what questions do you have about this DLC? Were you expecting a completely new land, or did you think we'd be visiting lands mentioned in the main game? What do you think Mesmer's true origin will be? Will Mikola be the final boss of Shadow of the Earth Tree, or will he grant us a new ending, making him summonable after defeating the Elden Beast, much like Ronnie? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and set notifications to all so you never miss out on any of our lore dives. We look forward to seeing you again for more Elden Lore.